Dion, Dion. So I heard you say some things, right, about words. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. I want you to understand something about words, right? There's things that people can say to you to make you go off without you knowing, without you being aware. But how are you aware? You use the scriptures, right? Now let me get you, let me get you the scriptures. I want to break it down so you read that. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Yeah. Let no man deceive you. That what? Let no man deceive you. So it's saying, let no man deceive you. You know what it means to be deceived? It means to be tricked, right? It says, let no man trick you. Now my question for you, sis, how could a man possibly trick a grown woman? How is that possible? I don't know everything, so what I'm told. Okay, that's, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. They can trick you by telling you African American. They can trick you by when you fill out that job application, you gotta check things that are not your nationality. When you look at that application, you don't see Judah, Benjamin, Levi on that thing, do you? You see, I don't know because I don't know where I'm from. Even that in itself, you do know where you come from. The Bible tells you where you come from. The Bible tells you come from the nation of Israel. That's right. It's not on the application. Other, you being tricked by when I'm not telling you nationality, sis, that's a trick. It's a trick they playing on you. Read it again. Let no man deceive you with vain words. With what? With vain words. Vain words is those words that's going to tell you not give you what you need, but give you what you want to hear. Those are vain words. Go ahead. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God. Because what? Because of these things cometh the wrath of God. Because we're tricked. Because we get vain words comes the wrath of God. Is that something that you want? Do you want the wrath of God, sis? I don't want the wrath of God. Neither do I want that for you. So that's why we give you this knowledge and this understanding, trying to let you know that no, sis, that's right. you may check other on your application. You may, you may walk around on the street and they call you because you're a black African American. You may do those things, right? But God said you are from the tribe of Judah. Right, right. That's your nationality. That's what you gotta stand on. And that's very important. So let's get Proverbs 23 and verse 7. You're right, you're not, but guess what? Matter of fact, get Acts 17 and verse 11. You're right, you're not gonna learn all this in one day, right? But what I want you to do, I want you to take what you have heard, and I want you to do some a diligent research on it and see whether it's true or not. That's what we encourage. Read that, you got it? This is the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Bring it up. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. It said these are more noble, meaning they have more honor for it. In that they received the word with our readiness of mind. So they received the word with a readiness of mind, meaning, hold on, there's possibly some things I'm doing wrong. There's possibly some things that could make me get the judgments of God. Bring it yeah. They had that in their mind, right? And see what they did. Read. And search the scriptures. They did what? And search the scriptures uh -huh. daily. They searched the scriptures daily. That's morning, right? Whether those things were so. So it says, whether. right here because you're going into different translations of the bible and try to tell you what okay well if you get the niv or you get the new standard version it's easier to read to the king james right that makes no sense does a baby know how to come out the womb and walk immediately it's difficult right but with in repetition and with practice they get those steps down right. it's the same thing with the king james 
The words may not be normal, but guess what? With repetition and practice, it becomes second nature. Read that right, again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, and verse 6. Let no man deceive you. That's deceiving you. When they give you different translations of the Bible, that's deceiving you. She said, uh, ask a question. Ask a question. Can we have more than one wife? So you believe in the Bible? Yeah, sometimes. You believe in Christ? I don't know. Okay. Get to the first Corinthians chapter seven. I'm gonna ask you that question because I want to ask you if you believe in the Bible, because the Bible is our it's our base. We have to build a foundation. The scriptures is our foundation. And we don't have the same foundation, we can't build, right? So now, with that being said, I'm gonna get you what Christ the black Messiah said out of his own mouth. Teach, and then I want you to I want you to tell me whether we can have more than one wife. Read Bring it out. First Corinthians chapter seven, I think it's verse two. The book of First Corinthians, chapter seven and verse two. Bring it out. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. So what is fornication, sis? Sex. Huh? Sex, sex right? Sex what? Oh my gosh. Come on. I we grow? I don't I don't know. Sex outside of marriage, right? Okay. So sleeping from woman to woman to woman, okay. and then man, a woman sleeping from man to man to man. Okay. It said to avoid getting in that trap or that that uh that trip getting tripped up in those doctrines. This is what you gotta do. Read. Let every man. Let what? Let every man. So it says, let every man. Go ahead. Have his own wife. No, let him have two, three, four, five wives. Have his own wife. His own wife means one. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. right. That's straight out of Christ's mouth. Right. So you tell me, sis, understanding this scripture now, how many wives can we have? One. That's right. One. Uh, no. Right. My right. second question would be, where did you learn that from? Uh, well, my, my homegirl and her husband, it was, it was a part of it. They were part? You remember the name of it? It's neither here or there because they wasn't teaching you the right way anyway. Right. They was getting you in that, they was, they was teaching you, they was making you error for the judgment of God by teaching that doctor that's you didn't have more than one wife, Teach more than one husband. Teach. It makes no sense. I have one wife right now. I can only imagine having three. So one is enough for me. You understand that? All right, sis. So you understand that, right? Bring that again. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, uh -huh. and let every woman have her own husband. So it's saying you, let you have your own husband. No multiple wives here. So when you win that doctrine, the Bible says you're in what's called fornication. That's right. And what happened to fornicators? First Corinthians 6 and 9. Bring it out. Let's see the judgment, what happens to fornication. So if you want multiple wives, even though Christ said one wife, one husband makes a family, you want to go outside that doctrine? The Lord said you're in fornication. Bring it out. And in fornication, this is what you're going to get. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? No. The righteous, the unrighteous inherits the kingdom of God. That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Shall not, shall not, shall not. Meaning you're not making it. You're not there. Read. Be not deceived. There's that word again. Be not deceived or tricked. Don't be tricked. Read. Now the fornicators. No what? Now the fornicators. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it said to avoid fornication that you have one wife, one husband. So when you have multiple wives and multiple husbands, you're in fornication. And then this scripture is saying that fornicators would not get the kingdom of heaven. That's right. right. So when you get caught up in that doctrine, and someone teaching you that, what are they doing? They're keeping you from the kingdom of heaven. That's right. That's what they're doing. Hold on. No idolaters. So hold on. So when you're in fornication, it's a form of idolatry too? You see how these things multiply? Read on. No adulterers. No effeminate. No abuser of themselves with mankind. So that's going into homosexuality and being a lesbian. So it's saying those people cannot get the kingdom of heaven too. And it's not that we hate those people. It's that if the Bible says it, I have to teach you. I'm commanded right. to. Teach, huh? I'm commanded to. No matter how we feel about it, no matter how anybody on this street may feel about it, if the Bible says it, I'm going to preach it. That's right. Bring it in. Nor thieves. Nor thieves. Now, we steal from each other all the time. The black Native American and Hispanic uh, community, we always steal from each other, right? Oh, I don't like that. That brother got a nice car with some rims. You know, I got to take that from him. We always steal from each other. That's our mindset. We got to get out of these things. Because when we get those things, we cannot get the kingdom of heaven. Read on. No, no covetous. No covetous. No 
Drunkards. No drunkards are those that abuse alcohol. Not saying you can't drink. You can drink a little bit, but you can't abuse that thing. Read on. No revelers. No revelers. That's those that go clubs and parties and things like that. Bring it up. No extortioners. Uh -huh. No inheritor that shall inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not inherit. Not, not, not inherit the kingdom of God, sis. So it's very important that you reframe that mind, though. You got to cast that away. You got to cast that away because it's keeping you from learning your nationality. And That's you right. Yourself, you see yourself on this side? Do you see yourself on this sign? This sign right here. See where it says the uh, 12 tribes of Israel? Right here are biblical nationalities. I can go into the scriptures and I can show you the tribe of Benjamin, I mean tribe of Judah, tribe of Benjamin, tribe of Levi, and so on. But where can I find American black in the, in the scriptures? Or is it in there at all? It's not. So according to biblical text, which is this side here, what would you classify yourself as? You see it says? Which tribe would you be from? You don't know? What's your dad? Your dad was a so-called black man? No, what was your dad? He was from what? Belize, huh? So you're probably from the Northern Kingdom. Zebulon. So you reach from a tribe of Zebulon. That's right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.